We simply, uh, we need, we need negative charges in, in our body. And if the water is, is healthful, it's going to probably have a higher pH. Um, and by the way, there's misinformation. A lot of people think that if you drink water that's alkaline or so-called alkaline water, which has become somewhat controversial, um, that it'll get neutralized in the stomach anyway. So why bother? Because of the stomach acid, <laughs> you know, and that, that's a, a good argument. However, uh, what people who, who, uh, who use that argument, what they fail to realize is that the amount of stomach acid is very small. So if you drink a thimble full of, of water with high pH, yeah, it'll get neutralized by the stomach acid. But if you drink, a, you know, like a glass full, uh, the volume overwhelms, greatly overwhelms the volume of stomach acid. So the effect is, is pretty minor. Um, uh, just a side comment. <laughs> yeah, no, that's always been a, a, a big question of mine is, you know, there's, you know, the companies as well as I do that make alkaline water, and sell bottled alkaline water and the claims that they well, make. Well, I don't know them so well, but yeah, okay. But in, yes. in Japan, this is very popular. And um, I'm told, I'm told that, if you go to Japan, um, if you or you live in Japan and you have you have uh, any gastrointestinal disorder, um, you know, from your mouth to your rear end, anywhere in between, uh, they'll pay for you to drink alkaline water, either either to get a machine that produces alkaline water or bottle alkaline water. I'm not sure of details, but I've heard from several people that that's what happens. So. So there may be something to it uh, because I know they they've done extensive tests in Japan, and I I, I haven't followed the counter arguments uh, in detail, so I I'm not sure. Anyway, I make it a habit of, of trying to say nothing about any kind of commercial water because I, I I feel feel it's necessary to remain independent of any kind of product, any commercial product. Um, we're doing pure science and. Um, I don't want even to cast the impression that we're favoring something because they're paying us or something like this. I can totally understand and appreciate that. So. Yeah. And thanks for answering that question because um, you probably shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, so one more. Um, I've done a lot of work with uh, separating um, soil biology from um, different things, whether it be compost or soil. And part of the... So you mean separating soil or soil biology? Uh, soil biology. So extracting biology from different matrices, uh, everything from compost to, to actual soil. And um, then... I don't what understand. I, um, how do you... Say I don't understand. How do you extract biology from soil? Uh, I'll tell you. Um, so basically, I make a soft collider. So by that, I mean, um, if we were standing in water and I punched you, you would feel me. You'd feel the impact, but it wouldn't hurt. That's not true above ground or above water. So the concept was to brush organic matter together to peel off the humic fulvic acids as well as any of the protozoa, nematodes, fungi um, that were attached to that organic matter. Um, and then once you've extracted it, now you've got a solid and you've got this liquid that I lovingly refer to as chocolate water. Um, and the chocolate water takes a long time for that, that fine, fine particulate to settle out. So then now you have to dewater it you have to you have to separate all of the water from the solids the solids can then go back to the compost pile or back into the ground but by dewatering it you're extracting pretty much all of the biology that you potentially could extract from that material um, and in the dewatering process i use vibration i've tried presses i've tried a bunch of different things so so this is leading to my question 